Hi guys, and thanks for joining me on this rather dark and gloomy Friday. But I hope you're well and you're all geared up for a great weekend of gigs or whatever you're going to do. Today's video is uh, a little bit about um, well, a few different things as ever. I'll try and keep it short and sweet. This one is about taking an idea that you play, one bar of music, and trying to get everything out of that one idea that you can. Because I'm always saying to my students, and I think I've mentioned it here a few times, it's good to get a YouTube playlist. So you get inspired by all these brilliant clips that you see and you put them into that playlist. And you end up, of course, because we all let each video go on to the other and other, and you could be there for hours and it's brilliant. What a great source of information. But um, you make that list and you keep adding, but sometimes we don't go back into that list and see, oh, <clears throat> I got that sort of clip by Dennis Chambers or something. I need to go and check that out. I've forgotten that. We just end up with this massive list of inspirational things, but we never get around to actually trying to copy them and learn them. So I say get another playlist next to that, you know, things to work on and working on kind of playlists, and then take one or two ideas from, you know, I need to work on into the other playlist and say, okay, there's two that I can work on. And then whether it takes a month, whether it takes six months, whatever, work on those ideas, get them feeling good and sounding good. Then they can go to another playlist of kind of done. And then you can put one or two more in and keep moving them across. And I think it's a really good way of making sure that the inspiration you get from watching these amazing musicians from around the world, um, making sure that you've got them one in a place where they're all together. So that's kind of your list. And then as you move on, you put them into the working on and completed list, then you've got a visual kind of representation of what you've, you're actually working on. The other thing is to take, I said earlier about taking one idea and trying to glean everything from it that you can, you can before moving on. Because I think human nature is, we always want to go on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And that's cool. And as I say, another clip on YouTube might pop up and you go, oh, that's the new thing now. Again, put it in your to work on playlist and so on and so forth. Um, but I think once you've got one idea, uh, as I say, this is what I mentioned to my, when I'm mentoring or teaching my private students. And basically what it is, it's I give them a bar of 16th notes in 4-4. Four, four. So we've got 16 beats, okay? And I don't put any accents above it and I don't put any stickings above it. I just say, right, there's one bar of, you know, your semi-quavers. What are we going to do with them? And they sort of go, well, it's digga, 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 digga. You know, it's like, well, yes, it is that. It could just be right, left, right, left. Think of the different stickings we could use. And then think of where the accents are placed. So this is the kind of thing that I do when I'm sat down at home, probably with a cup of tea uh, or coffee. And I literally give myself that one bar of, of music. And then I'll look at that and think, okay, um, I'll tap out maybe with my hands a phrase. I'll think, what would it sound like if I just do it, not willy-nilly, but looking at it and thinking, right, well, if I just do two accents there, one there, two there, three there, what's that gonna sound like? Or whatever, that's one way of doing it. Another way I might do it is look at the stickings. I think, what would be an interesting or tricky sticking? How would that work? Then put the stickings over the top, then the accents. You know, but the one that I'm kind of penning through here is something that, uh, was on my mind when I woke up today. It's one of those things, it's a morning inspiration. Um, and the basic sticking for this, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. One thing I really dig and really like in, in, in a phrase is having the accents at the start, which you may think are gonna be like a clave pattern and kind of a little bit predictable, then spinning round coming on the other side of the beat of the E's and the Er's, if you like, of a one E and a one E and a two E, one E and a two E, so you get this do gung, 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 you know, and I think it's where funk lives, you know, funk lives in the E's and the A's, da 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 you know, it's all that kind of James Brown, Tower of Power kind of world. Um, and sometimes I'll write a, a, another sticking, so underneath, um, the music that you're probably looking at at the moment or you've just looked at. Number two is left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left. So again, a, a different way of sticking this 
and a little bit tricky, but it's the same accents as the one the sticking in number one. It's the same accents, it's the same phrase, but just another way of sticking it, which gives me other ways of phrasing it onto the drum kit. Now at the moment, I'm just gonna be playing it on a pad um, with brushes, because all my sticks are at the studio today. I, I haven't got, can you believe it? A drummer hasn't got a pair of sticks in his own pad. Terrible. But I'm gonna stick it slowly on the pad for you in a minute. And of course, well then I say to my students, once you've got that, and it, it's all right to play it slow. You know, these aren't things that you should be rushing at and just nailing straight away because you'll get bored. That isn't part of the process. The process is to make it a little bit tricky and get you thinking about where those musical accents go and how you can phrase them on the drums and with which hand. So if you're naturally right-handed, so you don't always get, you know, right hand heavy. And if you're left-handed, similar thing. You don't want to get left hand heavy. Um, and you might want to put it onto a crash cymbal. So I say with these accents here, you could then put a bass drum underneath the accents when you're on the kit and then try them on the cymbals. What comes up there? Then maybe if you want to take the bass drum away and just play those accents on the toms or keep the bass drum underneath as well, that's cool too. That's another variation. This one idea, you see, you can get countless ideas from it. It's not just the one idea. And I've, from studying um, Dave Weckles playing uh, back in the day and, and Buddy Rich, uh, Tony Williams as well and Steve Smith and I would see that sometimes they would take a certain phrase and just spin it around with a different sticking or place it somewhere else on the kit and you know the penny dropped that I should be doing this you know instead of trying to jump for the next lick use the one I've got at the moment use this phrase I'm working on and just really soak it dry of everything that I can. Okay so here we are and I've got my trusty Bill Sanders brush pad here which is amazing this guy makes some of the best pads out there. And if you haven't got one of these and you're a brush player and you need to practice, instead of using record sleeves like I used to do back in the day, get one of these bad boys. They're wicked. Uh, and these brushes are actually I got from Matt Green. I usually use the uh, Vic Firth Prestige, I think they're called, or Heritage brushes, the purple ones. Um, but these are kicking around home. They sit on top of the leady kit and it's just nice to have them around. They're the brushes I used to use back in the day when I was learning drums. I used to get them from Assembly Music in Bath, which I've talked about many times, very fond memories of that shop. So it's nice to have these again. So cheers, Matt, nice one. Ooh. Right, okay. So the first sticking for this exercise was left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I'll do the same exercise, but I'll put the accents in. And then, I mean, even here in the stickings played like that, there's a kind of melody in there. And I've talked about this before in my um, pad videos about how I like to try and find you know, kind of melodic rhythmic patterns that then I can go onto the tom-toms or the cymbals and get, you know, interesting phrases from. And also it's a left-hand lead because I wanted it to be, uh, you know, not an obvious right-hand heavy thing. So here we go again, I'll put in the accents. Three and four and. One, two, three, four, one, Two, three, four. So you can imagine those accents being on the toms would sound really good. I'm gonna use my Rubik's Cube as a tom, so we could get. So we could move it around this pad to here. You could go from
you know, so this could be <laughs> something else. It could be um, a tom-tom, it could be a cymbal. And of course, I said earlier, we could put a bass drum under the accent. So when you get onto the cymbals, that sounds pretty funky too. And then number, sticking two is a little bit trickier. And I've never played this before, but I, I fancy giving it a go. So we've got, without the accents, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So a little bit quicker. Three and four and. Bit of a mistake there. So eventually I'm going to get those accents in. So it'll be. So you can see at the end of the bar, all the accents are back on the left which on the drum set will give me a different kind of combination. Uh, and it's tricky, you know, I've not played at any speed at the moment, but this is good. This is why, as I say, I challenge myself. And it's the same phrase. And what's nice about it is if I was gonna play it first with sticking number one, that'll give me certain combinations. And then sticking number two, if I wanted to play some other phrases, then come back to it a bit later, then that would give me other combinations and phrases as well. Okay, so I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, I would suggest taking one of those stickings, or maybe both, sitting down on the pad, going through the process I just went through, then take it to your drum kit. But more importantly, sit down with a piece of manuscript paper or something. You can write it even on a basic piece of A4. It doesn't have to be staves. You could just write it anywhere. Write it on your hand, write it on a pad, anywhere. But the main point is you sit down and you try and do some of these combinations for yourself. It's a great feeling to sit down find a bar of music, and of course it could be two bars, it could be four bars, whatever you want, but I, I always start with one, and then it can spread and grow from there. And just take it to the drum set, see what you come up with, you know, record yourself playing it, listen back or watch it back and think, yeah, that's pretty good, and start inventing. You, you'll start to feel like a songwriter, you'll become your own Lennon and McCartney, you know, all in one. I hope you enjoy that, and I hope you get on the drum kit right now, or very soon, and try some of those ideas out. As ever, Thanks to everyone who's subscribing. They're going up every month, it's brilliant. And thanks for the love on my YouTube shorts as well. They're really good. I've won up to nearly 2000 this week, which is ace. Um, and if anybody wants the sticking for that pattern, just let me know, because uh, it's the linear crossover one. It's a really old one. I actually did it on my uh, Technique and Musicality DVD back in 1847 or something. Um, but uh, it's still a goodie, and every now and again I, I wheel it out of the barn and give it a, a bit of a go. So yeah, brilliant. So as I say, and also another thing you should do is hit the, the bell, notification bell, so you, when I post these bad boys, you can always catch them in case you just miss them if they don't come up on your feed. Anyway, great weekend, guys, coming up. Enjoy it. Uh, I'm back to the rehearsal studio now to get back to work. So take care, have a great time, keep drumming, keep being happy, and I shall see you next week.